How do's guys? Okay, so for this video, as promised, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have a look at how the system's performing. So we're gonna jump on VRM, uh, go through basically what it's been doing for the last two months. Uh, I'd also going to take you and show you exactly some of the issues that I've experienced with the system, the good and the bad, as they say. And then finally, I'd like to go through and just say, if I were to do it again, some of the things that I might change and do differently. Um, so with that said, let's get cracking and let's have a look at the system. So as you can see, um, it's a pretty overcast day. Uh, it's cloudy. It's it's only nine degrees. No, no sun at all. Uh, we're not actually pulling very much at the moment. That's primarily because it's just the set of freezers that are, are running. Um, and by the looks of it, they're in their low point, you know, instead of being up at right, what we got, you know, jump in between. 100, 100 plus, you know, just jumping up and down as the freezers come on, and, uh, uh, as the freezers turn themselves on and off. Um, PV we're pulling not too bad considering how bad it is, most of which is getting pushed into the battery, which is good. Um, we're only losing probably around, let's see, something like 10% overnight which considering we're now what it's december the 9th uh, we're doing we, that's that's pretty good um, i'm quite happy with that that means we're getting more than enough energy to keep the system running speaking of which if we do a little breakdown of what we've done so far so as i said this is from what is this the 2nd of october is when i booted the system We've done 210 kilowatt hours of solar and used 143 of those kilowatt hours. Uh, let's break that down. What's consumption been over that period? Um, 65 kilowatts have come from the battery and 78 have come directly from the sun. So that's not too bad. That means we've been able to do washing machines, charge electric bikes, charge ev basically everything that we possibly can. As soon as the sun comes out, any, as everybody knows, as, so, as soon as you have any sort of solar system, whenever you can, you jump straight on and you're like, oh my God, the sun's out, quick, put everything on. So that includes distillers as well, because we distill our water, because the tap water is not great at the moment. Um, if we do solar, you can see 133 of those kilowatt hours of the 210 went into the battery and 78 were direct use. Um, what's interesting about this is it shows you the performance, uh, obviously what's lost in heat, what's lost in charging and all of that, which is why you get the discrepancy between the two. But yeah, I would, I would personally say the system has outperformed my expectation. Now that's really good. Um, if you remember, uh, right back at the beginning, the entire plan was to be able to have Two, two freezers on all the time, permanently backed up, able to do washing machine on occasion when it's good, when it's sunny, or if in a pinch, just pull directly from the battery, run a uh, water pump so that we can pump all of our water to uh, the tanks that are in the vegetable patch, and to also charge the two electric bikes that we have, and then anything else that, need, that has a battery and such. Now, having said all that, at the after about a month of running the system if we jump into the alarm logs as you can see now these are all back in november because uh, from the first of november out of nowhere i suddenly got a low battery warning with a high dc ripple now after a little bit of investigation and finding out what that basically means is there is a sudden voltage drop on the dc side whenever an AC load lets go, as in it finishes pulling and it lets go. So what happens is you create a spike on the DC and because of normally, this is, I think the first thing to always check is connections um, because it's one of the most common things that can cause a DC ripple. Now, as you can see, this went on from the first up until about the fourth which is where it got out of hand and then there were issues around ground tests. It's basically what was happening is the um, inverter charger, so the MultiPlus 2, kept feeding power to the freezers as they were saying, right, I need just 100 watts, please. Right now I want zero. And as that drop was happening, it was causing the ripple and then eventually it started to lead to the, the ground relay error. Now that's obviously when it's tried to reboot itself and the MultiPlus has come along and said, right, well, I'm not happy. 
I'm, I'm getting I'm getting thrown loads of errors and I'm failing to do a ground relay test, which of course is really important. But as you can see, there is there is a there is a second alarm on the 22nd, but this is an internal um, battery error alarm. Now this one, before I go into the DC one, which is quite good because honestly, when you find out what it is that I had done that caused this. You won't believe it because trust me, it's such a schoolboy and basic error. It's almost laughable. If it wasn't so serious, obviously mucking around with DC uh, voltages is never something to take lightly. But still, when you see it, you'll just go, I can't believe it because trust me, I couldn't. Anyway, so back to this error message. This one was basically what had happened is we pulled uh, the freezers off of both the batteries because I was adding a new battery, I was changing around some of the cabling, which I didn't record, it wasn't interesting, it was just me tidying up some more cables and there's plenty of videos of me doing that during the build anyway. Um, what it actually was is Pylon Tech batteries, especially, I don't know about all of the range, but certainly the US 2000Cs, which is the ones that I'm using in my system, if they go without charge or discharge in is it 48 hours or 72 hours, I can't remember the time frame, it might be 48 hours, they go to sleep. And what happens is if one of the batteries goes to sleep and it's, say for example, it's, not, it's never going to be the master one, the master one freaks out because it suddenly loses communication with it. Now, the irony is the easiest way to fix this, at least at the moment, this is, this is what Pylon Tech's uh, official line is on it, it just needs to either get charged or it needs to have power taken from it. So I literally leant over, flicked the switch that controls the water pump, water pump came on, batteries came back on live, error was cleared. And I haven't had one since because I've not had the system running without anything on the AC load. So basically it's just a case of like the system trying to save energy on the batteries so efficiently, but it was then causing an issue that the master battery was like, where have you gone? Suddenly a battery's gone missing, please help. Anyway, so that, that error, if I'm brutally honest, is something that should never appear again, because it's unlikely that I will ever run the system without at least freezers on it. So that's a good thing. But yes, let's get back to our high DC ripple. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, is if I move you over to this little screen where we've got a video, this is some raw footage of when I was putting the system together. Now, as you can see, like I'm just, I'm milling about and doing things in the background. So we, we don't really care about what I'm doing here, but you know, you can see that I'm working away and such. Um, however, what you can notice is if I, pause here we go if I pause myself here can you see the obvious and quite frankly ridiculous mistake that I made oh yeah okay I'm sorry it's so pixelated because I've zoomed in so much on the video but if you look at this fuse okay this this post okay I haven't put the connector on because I haven't finished I've only just put in this video I've only just put the cable on this one okay there's a little space here but that's because there's the connector for the Lynx DC uh, distributor box that if if a fuse blows, it shows that it's red, blah, blah, blah. This is how the unit gets its power. This one, great, yeah, all, all tied in. It's just a filler fuse because nothing's in this post. That's great. However, can you see here this great big gap where I clearly have only put this bolt on finger tight? Now, what's interesting is if we scrub through the rest of this video, in a minute, I'm going to, sorry, sorry, a bit of motion sickness there because I throw us around and I move us let me just move this over there. I threw this around a little bit, but as you can see, I still haven't tightened this up. You can still see there's a quite a big dark shadow behind this one. And there's the bolt for this one. If I if I just, um, if I zoom in just a little bit more so that I can uh, scroll this up so we can actually see what goes on. So through the rest of the video, I just, yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm having a great time putting all the cables. Yeah, better put that one on, that's lovely. Better get that, better get that bolted in. Yeah, oh, look, look at that. Make sure, make sure, no mucking about. Got to make sure that it's a really good fit and that it's really, really tight. Shall we, shall we check some of the other bolts? Shall we check some of the other bolts once we've tightened this one up? Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll check, we'll check the other four. No problem, check the other four. Shall we check the top ones again? Wow, why would I do that? Why would I forget to tighten that one at the top? No, no, what does he do? 
just puts his little cables on and oh yeah let's throw the cover on top so there you go basically all of the issues that I experienced at the beginning of November all these DC ripples that if we go into the event logs and we go back to November 4th basically on this day five installation setting updates that's me making changes and seven alarms was all down to that one cable now basically what had happened clearly is like for the first month it had stayed compressed against uh, the DC distributor so it wasn't a problem there wasn't a loose connection because obviously it ran it ran from the 2nd of October all the way up to the 1st uh, before we got this alarm but basically when I took it out when I downed the system on the 4th and took this apart to find out what was going on inside I just couldn't believe it it was just completely loose I could I could move it in the joint anyway so I retightened that did that back on and thankfully since then as you can see in here nothing's nothing's touch wood touch wood touch wood touch wood all of that goodness nothing else has happened with the system and we're now at the point where it's literally just sitting chugging along Ooh, you know, look we've dropped down to 175 watts however we have gone up to a charge of 58 percent so i'll take it it's all good and um, the other thing that i wanted to do on this uh video is i wanted to quickly just go through some of the things obviously one of the things i will say to you is i'm not a professional and i think i've said several times in these videos that these are not a how-to guide this is just simply how this idiot has decided to do it now whether that's right or not now that's completely that's completely not the point these are not how-to guides i'm not expecting somebody to just simply watch my videos and then build one of these systems you should always do your due diligence make sure you understand all the rules and regulations where you are because they're different across the world and my other piece of advice I will give you is check once, check twice, and goddamn check a third time just to make sure you haven't missed something stupid. Because honestly, I, I couldn't believe that. Oh, and the other thing I would highly recommend uh, when doing something like this, apart from always making sure you get good quality wires, none of those cheap eBay ones that promise to be, eBay ones, sorry, Amazon ones that promise, oh yeah, they're the greatest things ever, and they, they turn out just to be coated very thin aluminium instead of being copper anyway make make sure you get yourself a torque wrench because the amount of bolts that weren't done up or over tightened when i went back through on the fourth and read it everything was amazing okay so the last thing i'd like to do on this video is i'd like to just go through a couple of things that as they say hindsight is 2020 if i redid this system again what things would i change now one of the biggest problems with this is obviously i started with a system that was already on the rule well already on the wall if you remember right back at the beginning it was like my solar system is 12 volt it worked it did all the things we wanted to do it just couldn't run anything of any substantial load for any periods of time um, so there is a little bit of legacy stuff here. A perfect example of that is on the second picture here, where the combiner box is. If I were to do this again, the this eco box would be much closer to where the cables enter, so that if I ever wanted to add more panels, because the this particular combiner box can only handle 3,500 watts max input from the PV, um, and once I get my other panels, because at the moment, as you know, I've only got six panels and only three out of the four batteries I want. So with the panels that I'm using, they're 330 watts. So when I have my 10, that'll be 3,300. So I'm 200 watts under what this particular box can handle. So if I ever wanted more, which I can't really see at the moment that I would need, um, because the system is delivering more than is required from it, but Never say never with solar systems, as anybody who has ever played with them or decided to build them, you always end up going, oh, I could do a bit more power or could I get more out of it if I did X, Y and Z. Anyway, so what I would have done is I would have moved this box closer to here, which would have then allowed for the solar charger uh, to go further over to the left as well. Uh, which would then mean it would have been very easy to put a second PV box and a second charge controller if I ever wanted to. 
The same sort of goes uh, here for this sort of rat's nest of cabling that I've got just purely because of how I wanted things to go and so I didn't have to spend so much money on long runs of cable. However, what I would have done is, as you can see on the uh, DC Lynx distributor, it would have been much nicer if there was space on the left hand side or the right hand side for that matter so that I could put another one because um, at the moment I've only got uh, one one free port uh, one free connection should I say to add probably more batteries or another uh, solar charger um, and if I needed to add another one I'd have to sort of start dismantling stuff so you know the the charger here and all of this connection would have to move but I suppose that wouldn't be too bad because you could simply take these out of the way and then add the solar charger onto the new version of this. Basically, the simple the, the simple thing is is if I had start if I started again, I would sit down with all of the dimensions of the boxes and lay out a lot better. But as I said, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, I'd say that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I hope I hope you found it interesting and maybe a little bit useful. If you've got any questions, please, please do put them in the comments below. Now, I'm not a professional, but if if there's a question, for example, Ben, why on earth did you ever put your Serbo GX box on the side? Well, now it's put on the side because I don't want dust going into all of the ports because this particular wall is quite crumbly. The render on it is not very good. And if I didn't, you'd end up with all the ports getting full, filled with dust and it'd be a nightmare. But yeah, if you do have any questions, please put them below. I will try my best to answer them. I can't promise I'll know the answers, but I think that's where we'll leave this video. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.